When looking at negligence, we know that the first thing we need to do is establish that the defendant owes the plaintiff a duty of care. And so far, we've been looking at situations where the, um, the defendant has uh, done an act or an omission. There's been some conduct, either positive uh, or negative, an omission, something that they should have done, that creates the harm. But there's also situations where economic harm or um, you know, financial harm happens to someone as a result of advice or potentially careless advice that's given. That's called negligent misstatement. And it affects a lot of business relationships and a lot of the business community. And we've got a few listed there, accountants, auditors. I would put in uh, advertising and marketing, um, advisors, management consultants, a whole lot of people who give advice to other people. And what we have in negligent misstatement is the establishment of a new way to owe a duty of care for this kind of economic loss that results from a, from a careless statement and a particular test. So the test has three parts. The case, which we're going to look at in a minute, um, is Headley, Byrne and Heller. Okay. So Headley, Byrne and Heller is our authority. And in that case, they laid out a test to say, look, when will the defendant owe the plaintiff a duty of care? Remember, it's about the defendant giving advice to the plaintiff leading to some form of financial loss. The defendant can owe a duty of care when three things happen. One, the advice given must be business or serious in its nature. So it's not any kind of advice. It must be serious slash business advice. The second thing that we need is that the defendant or the person giving the advice, right, knew or should have known that the plaintiff intended to rely on the advice. Now, think about this in a normal business context. If you're a consultant and you give advice, you know or should know that the person you're giving that advice to is going to rely on it. Okay, so that's a fairly simple requirement to meet under most professional style advice giving relationships. The third element that we need is that it must be reasonable in the circumstances for the plaintiff to rely on it. So if there was some form of odd circumstance or where, that, where the advice just appeared to be totally ridiculous, number three might come into play. But generally, it is going to be reasonable for you to rely on a consultant's advice or an auditor's advice, etc., as part of your day-to-day uh, -day business. Okay. So once those three conditions are met, then what we have is the defendant owing a duty of care to the plaintiff around the statements that they make. To help us understand that, why don't we have a look at the case of Hedley, Byrne and Heller. Hedley, Byrne and Heller is actually a little bit of a difficult case just because of the complexity of the facts going on um, amongst other things. If we break it down, what we have is an advertising agency, Hedley, Byrne, who I'm going to use... Um, the burn because the heller are the bankers, right? Um, they're the bankers and they've got very similar names. So let's separate them and say we've got burn who are the advertising agency and heller who's the bank. Now what we have to understand is the way that advertising has worked in the past and continues to work in some cases. So what you have is a client who goes to the advertising agency Headley Burn. Then what Headley Burn does is they, they will kind of book and pay for uh, advertising time and space, say in a newspaper or on a TV. So let's say they're going to book some commercials at Channel 9. Now what they do is they actually pay, right? They pay for that ad and then they get the money off the client later, right? So they send a bill for the dollars. Now what a company like Headley Byrne is worried about is whether their client can pay them. Because if their client can't pay them, then they're going to have to pay the TV company and not be able to get that money back. So that's a really big problem for them. So what Headley Byrne do in this case is they go to the bankers, Heller, right, the client's bankers, and say, hey, can, can your client pay for this advertising? And Heller and Partners do give a reference, and they give a favourable reference. Okay. So now we have the advice 
from the bank to Headley Burn. Note here, though, another factor which we'll come back to is that there's an exclusion clause about the information, that it was given with no responsibility. Okay, so as a result of that reference, so they ask and a reference comes back. Okay, so as a result of that reference, they book the ad. Of course, client goes bankrupt. Well, not of course, but that's why we have a case, right? The client goes bankrupt. Burn are left owing this money. And so what do they say? They try and say, hey, we would never have done it if Hella hadn't given us this careless advice. So Hella should have to pay because they gave careless advice. What the courts found here was that Hella would have been liable. So someone in Hella's position giving this um, careless advice can result in damages for economic loss. Okay, so it is possible for it to occur. It didn't happen here because the disclaimer actually came into play. But they, this established the principle that you could be liable for economic loss due to careless statements. And the test that came out of Headley, Byrne and Heller was this three-stage advice. Notice there's nothing in here saying that there is actually a client relationship. The bank, they, the, it wasn't their bank that gave the advice. It was just a bank, right? So there's nothing in here. It just says when someone gives advice of a business of serious nature and they knew or should have known that the other person was going to rely on it and it's reasonable for that other person to rely on it, then you owe a duty of care when you make that statement. And that is our first way we can get negligent misstatement where there's a direct piece of advice.